Well, hi again. It's Ross Halleck with Halleck Vineyard. And I'm Harris Minor, uh, Director of Sales here at Halleck Vineyard. And we're on our quest to taste through what you're most interested in and what you're most interested in as defined by Mother Google. So uh, we've been going through the top most searched wines on Google. And this time we're going through another three. And we're going to start with Bread and Butter Pinot Noir from uh, California AVA. We have Flowers from Sonoma Coast, uh, really an inspiration for us, uh, the first kind of cult wine in Sonoma County. And, um, and also, you know, from Sonoma Coast, which is where our estate grown uh, vineyard is, uh, is uh, situated. And then we have Josh uh, Pinot Noir, which is uh, from the Central Coast. And we have our Haas Vineyard, which is from Sonoma Mountain. So we have literally four AVAs here. The most general, of course, is the, uh, the bread and butter, which is from California. But uh, um, clearly, these, are, these promise to be quite different wines, even though they're all the same varietal, same P uh, Pinot Noir. So let's start with the bread and butter. This is a 2019. And so we are limited to what we can get because we're kind of uh, focused on one purveyor, which is which is BevMo. And of course, you can't get our wines at BevMo, but uh, we can get all of these wines there. So that's why we are tasting through these wines as well, is our, our access. So... Oh, the color is quite light. Yeah, the color is very light. It's like almost like a dark rosé. Um, super translucent, super almost clear translucent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see this, but it's... Well, I don't think the camera does it justice, but it's much lighter than the rest of the wines. But we, we know from our own experience that color doesn't necessarily indicate uh, the complexity or the depth of the wine. It's just, you know, it, it's, your, it's your first clue, but it's not, a, it's not a, um, a revealing clue. The nose is much more revealing as a clue in terms of how this wine is gonna taste. And this is interesting. That's quite odd. <laughs> Um, well, so I get, I get kind of a musky note to start and then there's this big, rich note. Mm -hmm. It is raspberry caramel or, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like raspberry caramel, even, even a little butterscotch. It's, um, it's not, I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's just a surprise that a wine smells like this. Yeah. Well, it has I mean, wonderful memories for me. I'm a big butterscotch fan. I was going to say those little Werther's that you, you know, your grandma gives you. Yeah. 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 Um, I get this question a lot because this is a California wine. And when people mm. see that on the label, they ask me a lot, you know, what do you expect when you get a California wine as opposed to something that has an ABA? And the answer is you don't know what to expect. Mm. And, and I think this wine exemplifies that perfectly because I've never gotten butterscotch from Pinot Noir before. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, Tastes well, like butterscotch. <laughs> it is so butterscotch. I, you know, and I am it, the mark of any good wine is it delivers on the promise of the nose. And so, I would say that this is a good wine just because it smells like butterscotch and it tastes like butterscotch. And if you like butterscotch, you're gonna love this wine. It's not sweet. This is a dry wine, but it has really creamy, mm -hmm. buttery, butterscotchery, yeah. <laughs> butterscotchery notes. I mean, it's hard to ignore. It is like, it tastes like butterscotch. But you know, it still has nice balanced acidity, mm -hmm. which is surprising. Yeah, it's got great acidity. The body. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a creaminess. I, I mean. Oh, you're right. It's not even, yeah, it's a flavor profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's medium body. This wine is uh, 1999. It's got a 13.5% alcohol, which is, you know, reasonable. And, um, you know, pairing this wine is going to be a little challenging. Um, just because you don't think of butterscotch with food, but uh, because it is dry, so it's not sweet butterscotch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think maybe a, a pasta alfredo, some kind of creamy yeah, pasta. Totally, mm -hmm. any, any sort of creamy pasta, maybe even sausage you could get away with because it's mm -hmm. red. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that that caramelization will fit in with the caramel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the flowers. I'm excited about this wine. So this is a, a Flowers 2018 Sonoma Coast. So this is definitely a sister or a brother to us. We were introduced, I mean, our first winemaking experience was 
um, tutored by Greg LaFollette, who is the founder, founding winemaker of Flowers, and uh, definitely a mentor to us. And, um, you know, he has a very specific style. This is not his wine, so Flowers has since been purchased and is owned by a large organization. But um, this definitely has a Sonoma Coast uh, yes. profile. Yeah. Well, the thing that struck me first is how, how gem-like the color. It's a beautiful yeah. color. Beautiful color, yeah. It is a deep, deep ruby yeah. with um, hmm, with a, a hint of purple. Hmm. Wow. And what a nose. Yeah, that Sonoma Coast um, animal, that feral aspect, leaps out at me immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's followed up with that like sagebrush scent that mm -hmm. I often get from um, French wine, you know, which yeah. of course the Sonoma Coast is very Burgundian in style. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's the, the fruit in there is as one would expect from a Sonoma Coast wine, just a hint of, of fresh cranberries, mm -hmm. not dried cranberries, just it's got this pop of, of fresh cranberries with that feral note. Totally. There's kind of a, a licorice scent, but it's not, you know, like mm. black licorice. It's kind of a green uh, licorice, maybe like fennel or like hyssop. Even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's taste this. Well, wow. That, yeah, it's rich. It has um, uh, a leatheriness to totally. it. Mm -hmm. It really is a wonderful way of coating the mouth. Mm. There is um there is sort of a hole in the mid palate though. Yeah, I feel. yeah, it coats the mouth. It hits the front and it goes to the back, and then right in the mid, there's a little bit of hole. Yeah, it. yeah. So it, it it misses a note there. Um, you know, classic to uh, to Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir. It has that um, you know that that uh, it's got the leatheriness, but it also has the hint of uh, fresh cranberry, which we smelled, and also it has a kind of a, a, a pomegranate finish. So it's it's red fruit. And a little bit of spice on the end, wouldn't yeah. you say? Oh, uh, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. There's, um, you're right, that pop of pomegranate acidity, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of white pepper, and certainly a clove on the finish that I get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of red cabbage, actually. <laughs> Maybe that's the parent. There we yeah. go. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's do our last wine. I'm looking for my glass. Um, well, it might be this one. I think it is. Yep. Yeah, it is. So uh, I had a lot of Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So now we're moving to uh, you know really another wine in this this portfolio of, of wines here. Um, it's a Sonoma Mountain wine, and I'm guessing many of you have never tasted a Sonoma Mountain Pinot Noir, primarily because you know not a lot of people make uh, Pinot Noir from Sonoma Mountain in, in Sonoma and Sonoma County. Cold weather Pinot Noir is kind of like the, the king and everybody's looking and, and talking about like cold climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sonoma Mountain isn't cold climate. The east side of Sonoma Mountain stays pretty warm throughout the year. Um, you know, it doesn't get such a strong coastal influence because uh, it's shielded by Sonoma Mountain and, and can stay quite warm even through the evenings. Yeah, but before we dive into the Sonoma Mountain one, because um, mm -hmm. we, we were talking about that kind of in a, the general, like, you know, people ask what, what's, what makes an ABA different? What mm -hmm. makes a specific vineyard different? And, and that's a great example. But, you know, before we dive into kind of that microcosm, we want to mm -hmm. try um, the Central Coast, right? The Josh one? Oh, we haven't tried that one no, yet. No, no. Oh, gosh. Lots of Pinot. Yeah. <laughs> So I think it's that one. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So uh, what is the vintage on this one? 2020? Uh, this is 2020. Wow. Yes. So again, um, this is what we were able to get. You know, kudos to Josh for being able to sell out their wine so quickly as to bring in a 2020. You know, I'm, I I I'm, would be a little cautious about mm. 2020. Um, it was a tough year. Uh, we lost all of our crop to smoke tape. Now, Granted, uh, Josh is in the Central Coast, so maybe have a little less influence. Yeah. Well, that's another interesting thing. The Central Coast is a very large um, AVA. So yes. that's worth thinking about, too, especially mm -hmm. compared to um, the smaller AVAs we've been discussing, and then when we're going to go really down to a single vineyard at the end. Yeah. 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 So um, I don't get any indication of smoke taint in this. I don't mean to cast any aspersions. Um, just sharing what we all went through during, uh, the la during last year's vintage. And uh, this, um, the Josh has, uh, well, first let's look at the color. It's uh, darker than the flowers. 
it has a, sort of hints of amethyst as well, a touch of purple, mm -hmm. and it's translucent. It's a beautiful color. And what's the alcohol content on this one? Uh, it is 14.1. Oh, interesting. That's a little higher. Yeah, it's probably oh, actually, the highest. No, it's the same as the Sonoma Coast, now that I think about it. Is it? Let's see. Yeah, the uh, yes, yeah, yeah, they're both 14.1. They're both hmm. Honestly, um, it's kind of fruity. It's a little mm -hmm. disappointing in the sense that it's, it's pretty light. Mm -hmm. It's fairly indistinct. Uh, if I were to name the fruit, maybe um, like a pluot. Yeah, well, and a pluot's got to be distinct. It's kind of right. an apricot and a plum. So <laughs> tell me what that tastes like. But it is, there's fruit in there, and it is a stone fruit. Yeah. But it's it's just not very not very clear. Yeah, especially compared to the last wine, it, it mm -hmm. just doesn't leap out of the glass. The no, time. no, and probably not a fair comparison. Although, no, it's certainly. Yeah, it's 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 less than half the price at twenty four ninety nine. And if I didn't mention it, the um, the flowers is uh, sixty nine ninety nine. Oh yeah, that mm -hmm. is important enough. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I just find myself kind of searching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not super distinctive. There's nothing unpleasant about it. Yeah. It's um, it's variably correct uh, from a nose perspective. Let's give it a taste. And it's variably correct from a mouth perspective. Yeah, I think and, it follows and, up though. But not very distinctive. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of professional pastries use the word gray when mm -hmm. it comes to this, where like it's kind of indistinct. There's a lot of shades of things in there, but none of them really leap out at you. Mm -hmm. It is still fruity. Um, it has nice mm -hmm. acidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got nice acidity. Um, you know, it's not a flat wine, but there's not a lot of finish to no, it. No, yeah. The finish really drops off for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's perfectly serviceable. Yeah. Not, yeah, it's, you know, um, for twenty four ninety nine, it's uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't be disappointed, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's uh, you know it's like I say, varietally correct, rather indistinct, but um, perfectly nicely made wine. Yeah. So, what's the pairing for this one? Do you think um, this one would be a gentle pairing? I would say yeah. you know maybe a pork tenderloin. And given the sort of the tender fruit notes, maybe a little compote with oh, it. That would be nice, yeah. But you know, I think the wine actually is like a compote itself. So certainly, you know, it's uh, it depends on the compote, but they they would probably all go well together. Okay. okay. Well, sure. thanks for reeling me back. So now we can <laughs> taste the taste the uh, the Haas vineyard. I just want to make sure I get access to all the Pinot Noir. Rest. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what? It, so the Haas Vineyard is thirteen point one uh, percent alcohol. This is a sixty-seven dollar price point, and as I mentioned earlier, it is a Sonoma Mountain Pinot Noir. So as I said, it's mm -hmm. it's a very unique wine. There aren't a lot of uh, Pinots from Sonoma Mountain because of, of its its climate. And this is also a single vineyard, so it's even a smaller area that that tells you you know those specific characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Flowers has a C view uh, ridge. Uh, Pinot Noir as well that we were unable to try, but um, you know when you get into this kind of level of wine, you get really into like small areas. I mean, how mm. many acres is the Haas Vineyard? The Haas Vineyard is only two acres. Wow! And so it's <laughs> it's very very small. And I I can't even imagine how big the Central Coast is. Many many acres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Central. Yeah, it's it's as big as a state. <laughs> yeah, it's it's large. Mm -hmm. Not the state of California, but there are many states that that, that are are the same size or, or smaller than the Central Coast. Um, so this this wine just screams out of the glass. Mm -hmm. First, it has again a dark ruby color with the the amethyst hint, that touch of purple. So it's brilliant. And how would you describe the nose of this? Well, first of all, it's just that big, deep, dark fruit. Mm -hmm. Really wonderful. Not not stewed. Um, no. But certainly, you know, wonderfully deep and dark. And what's the alcohol content of this one compared to the other ones? This is 13.1, so it's, it's low. It's, wow, it's a percent less. I would mm -hmm. never guess that. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's it's it has a very rich feel to it. There's some flower notes in it, maybe a hint of violet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the dark fruits, it's 
kind of a black cherry, maybe even hinting at black currant. I would mm -hmm. say it goes that dark. Mm -hmm. I'm not not in a cab way, but definitely going that direction. And not in a not in a um on a dried fruit way like that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, totally. it, it's 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 fresh. It has a fresh yeah. note to it. Well, and the mouthfeel is so lush too. Mm -hmm. That's part yeah. of it. Let's give that a go. This is a very full mouthfeel. Oh. Yeah. So that black currant comes through. It's mm -hmm. a really rich, you know, we're talking fresh black currants. And um, you know, there's some mineral notes. Um, it's smooth, 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 but there's still uh, uh, um, that acidity that that makes it so it's not flat. It mm. just it it pops in your mouth. I'm gonna even go further. It almost reminds me of um, if anybody's ever had fresh elderberries. It's like that because they have mm. kind of a floral aspect to them, and they're mm. less vegetal than black currant, but they still have that really deep dark character. Most people don't eat fresh elderberries because they're actually poisonous if you eat too many. So be careful. <laughs> Uh, and you've tried them? Yeah, well, I, I live on the edge, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever offered them to me, but I guess somebody's offered them to you. <laughs> well, so apparently they don't like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so the finish on this lot, on this wine, is also of, of that hint of violet. So, and it has a long finish of, um, of fruit and, and flowers. So I think that's um, you know a good rundown of these uh, next wines that you uh, are all searching for. And I hope you're enjoying this little tete-a-tete uh, -tete between Harris and I, and uh, we look forward to the next one. Yeah, see you guys next time.